Hi, I'm Vincent. I'm part of the TWAL team. What is TWAL? Well, it's the boat here next to me. It's this dinghy. The great thing about this boat is that it can be carried in two bags. The hull is inflatable, so you can put it in the trunk of your car. You don't need a trailer, no need for a parking space, no need for a boat ramp for launching. You can just park it by the beach, open the trunk, take out the bags, and assemble, which will take me about 20 minutes. And then we're on the water to enjoy a nice family or a single trip. Let's get back to my car to get a T-Wall, to show you step by step how to get it ready, carry it, assemble it before putting it in the water. So here you see the boat is complete and stowed in the trunk. On this type of car with a two-thirds, one-third split rear seat, if you fold down one-third, you can keep the two seats in the back, and most importantly, you still have plenty of space to store your bags. So if you're a family traveling with lots of luggage, you're going to have to make some concessions or to find other solutions. But there are always possibilities to take the boat with you. You could use a luggage rack here and put the boat on the back like you would with a bike carrier or up top on the roof rack or in a cargo box of about 21 cubic feet to accommodate the two bags. The two bags measure 5 feet by 16 inches by 14 inches. They're not little bags, but that's normal because Tiwal is not a toy either. Not a small dinghy, but a 10 foot 6 inch boat that can carry two adults on board. These two bags weigh about 62 pounds each. In this bag, we have the frame, which is all the aluminum parts that form the structure of the boat. There's the rudder, the dagger board, the sail, and even the mast, which is made up of five sections. It's a carbon mast, like one you'd have on a sailboard. It's all here. In the other bag, we have the hull. That's really the big advantage of this boat, its inflatable hull. Here, the 10 foot 6 inch hull fits in this bag and remains very easy to handle. Let me close the trunk and we're going to take the bags to the beach. Obviously, we're not going to walk miles and miles with them, but over short distances, you can easily carry the bags on your own. The important thing is to carry the bag close to your body. The advantage is that on the narrow path like this, you couldn't come with a traditional boat. Whereas with Tiwal, there's no problem. You'll see. It's really simple. Putting it together will take about 20 minutes, without any tools, and it's intuitive. You'll need to learn how to do it using our detailed manual, and with experience, you'll get quicker. Every year we organize the Tiwa Cup, and before each start of the race, we organize the Assembly Challenge. The record to beat is about 10 minutes, but what matters is that even if it takes 30 minutes to get there, it remains quick and easy. Let's start by unpacking the hull. The bags open like this. We can see that they are plenty big enough, and the openings are too, to make them easy to repack. You don't have to do it 10 times to get the hull back in the bag. There really is room. So now let me take out the hull. I will put it in front of me. Let me loosen the securing straps that are here. And now I can unroll the hull. That's it, the hull is unrolled. You can see the Velcro already in place and the toe strap as well. That saves time. Now, let's inflate the hull. There's a low pressure pump in the bag that will give it the volume and shape the hull before putting the structural sections in place. This electric pump is battery powered. You can charge it up the day before and it's no sweat to inflate the boat on the beach. We have two valves on the boat that correspond to the two separate compartments. These are standard quarter turn valves. To open, you'll have to press and turn one quarter of a turn. So that's it, my valve is open just now and when we remove the pump, we're gonna have to close the valve. Now, here we go, I'm gonna inflate it. And that's it. We've inflated the hull to nearly 80%. We closed the valve, and that took only a little over three minutes. Now our hull is a little over eight inches deep, so that it gives it rigidity. Now, the structure we're going to put in place will form kind of a chassis, and that's what takes all the load from the rig, the rudder, and the dagger board, so that there is very little deformation in shape. We'll be sailing on a hull that's as stiff as a traditional boat. Now we can unpack the bag containing the structure. A bag similar to the hull bag with a large opening. In it you'll find all the other parts, the various elements of the structure, the sail, the carbon mast, the rudder and the dagger board. 
The first piece we're going to put in place will be the dagger board well. We're going to take a closer look at this central part. It's an aluminum piece that passes through the hull, and then the board sits in the well. Sometimes we get asked whether the hull is ever deformed by the dagger board, and if there's any play. The answer is no, thanks to the real aluminum dagger board well, which takes all the load. Now, put it in its housing here, position it, and align it with the buckles and the stainless steel rings. Then I'll get out the rest of the sections of the structure. Here we have two seats. Then, we have both reinforcement arms. And here are the wings. I put them directly on the hull, and I use the hull as a mat to avoid getting much sand on them. Note, here we have the bungs at the ends, these yellow caps and black caps. Yellow caps are going to be on the left side of the structure to show you which way around, and the black caps go on the right. As for the tubes, Assembly is like this with these push pins. You press it and it clips in. Let's put it together. So I'm going to start with the reinforcing arms. And yellow caps on the left. I'll just put that in here. And with the press of the thumb, you just need to push it. And you can hear the little click. So that's it. All set up fine. We'll do the same on the other side with the black caps. Press firmly. Then you'll have to find the forward wings and the aft wings. There are two in the front and two in the back. On this part, there are three push pins. So it's a front wing. Now the wing will go through this and end up in the housing here. When I move this bit the right way, I have the push pins pointing upwards to avoid falling into the first hole. So I insert my piece like this, I press, and I get through it easily. Once I get there, I'm gonna press and hold the structure by pushing with this hand. So now two fingers, I press here, I rotate the section, and you see it snaps into place. I'll do the same on the other side. So same here. I press, I push it through, I press there, and turn. Now let's assemble the transom. We have the rudder bracket that's here. Black caps on the right. Same thing. It's really cool. There are no tools only this interlocking system that allows the structure to snap together. Now there's just the seats left. I'll set one up. The first seat. Same system. That's okay. And that's the last piece to be put in place. So there's a little trick here. If I do it like this, I'm going to have to slide it onto the frame and bend it. I do it like this, I put it in, push the tube forward, which allows me to realign here. Once I'm in line, I'm going to be able to slide it back and position it with the push pins. So that's it, my structure is assembled and it's all in one piece. We'll fix the Velcro to the hull and that's the first stage complete. I'll start by positioning my frame down on the line of the boat so that visually the structure is in the middle of the yellow band. And now, with the Velcro straps, you'll see that there are several marks. The long length goes inwards. Here we see a red band that we're going to bring in position on the ring just there. After that, you have markers with a single yellow line, another one here, there, a double line, and on this side too. So here's how we do it. We're going to pass it through here and bring the red line to there. We go over the tube and we're going to fold down the yellow line on the yellow line, on the double line, on the double line, and we close it again. It's very important to do it this way, over the structure, never underneath, because the structure won't be secured against the hull. So now you see, it's tight. The other Velcro straps still need to be done up. Now that the structure is assembled on the hull, we'll be able to fully inflate it to high pressure. A new boat is delivered standard with this second manual pump, which has a pressure gauge, and we're going to top the boat up to 11 PSI. It should be noted that we also offer a high-pressure electric pump. This one is optional, and it will give you more freedom on the beach. And by that I mean we're going to set the pressure, walk away, and when we get back, the inflation will have cut off automatically. It's quite handy.
The battery here allows you to be self-sufficient on the beach. I suggest you inflate one compartment manually, the other with the electric high-pressure pump, so that you can see the difference. So here we go. I connect the hand pump. There's a quarter turn opening. You put the nozzle on the valve and turn. For the high-pressure pump, take out the battery. And here I've got the nozzle, same as the other one. Position that here. Connect the battery. Now connect the hose. Now the pump is operated by pressing start. Now manually here we're going to use the pump like this. The important thing is to hold it in place with your feet and to keep your back straight. At first it's fine, but by the end it gets a little harder. So make sure you inflate it properly by bending at the knees. What you also need to know is that today's paddle boards get up to 20 psi, whereas with T-Wall 11 psi is enough, since the rigidity comes from the aluminum structure. Okay, let's do it. Now we've reached 11 psi. We can see that the electric pump does the job faster than me. Now I'm going to disconnect the valves. I close the first valve, then the second one. We can see with the electric pump, the big advantage is that while it's running, I can do something else. Get ready, get changed, put on sunscreen, or prepare the sail. While with the hand pump, I get a little hot. Now let me take a minute here to look under the T-Wall's hull. What we can see right away, which is great, is that you can feel the lightness of the boat. It's really easy to carry. Now the first thing here, look at the drain plug. What's that for? Water will always make its way into a boat's hull. Like any kayak or fiberglass boat, there's a bung. Now on a T-Wall, it's here in case a little water gets between the two compartments. Another point is that we can see clearly on the front the shape of the hull. It's not a board. The hull isn't flat. The hull is V-shaped so as to have a bow that really helps the boat get up on the plane to get you through any chop. Now, one last important point I wanted to show you is the chafe strip. This band, the black part, is the same fabric used in rafting boats. It's wider at the back. This will allow beaching to drag the boat over short distances, and it's all hassle-free. It's really tough. The bottom of the hull is really strong. I drop it, and I don't have to worry. I don't want to get carried away, but that's it. That's the main advantage of the inflatable. Now we can see about preparing the rigging and setting it up to go sailing. We're going to take the sail out and unroll it on the beach. Remember, if you want to save time, you don't have to fold it in half. It's folded already to carry in the t -well bag. But if you wish to do so, it can also be transported full-size in a standard windsurfing bag that comes with the pack. There you go, it's folded. So we're going to put it together, battens, and the boom. Now I'm going to unroll my sail. Regarding sail sizes, we have different models. This one is 75 square feet, there's a 56 square foot sail, and a 75 square foot one, which can be reefed so it offers both sizes. This is a 75 square foot mainsail. What is interesting to note is that the main fold in the sail is down the central part here. Why is that? because we have two fabrics on the sail, the Dacron in front and the lighter monofilm. So use the seam as a mark so that we don't damage the monofilm. Here we can also see the main sheet, the vang, the cunningham. The various lines are in place to save time. We still have to fit the battens and the boom that's here. For the battens, I'll start with the top one. There are three identical battens, so no confusion possible. I'm slipping into the batten pocket. I'm going through the batten tip here, back in the loop, and close it again. The idea is to tension enough to remove any creases. There you go. Same thing for the others. I just have to fit the boom. 
You can see that it's a polyester tube. The big advantage is that it's not one of those traditional aluminum booms, which can be scary and can hit you hard. Now we have something very light with a small diameter that's a lot safer. We'll position it here in its pocket. It works like a batten. I'm slipping it in here. Then position the front end, which is like a rowlock. This connects to the mast. The rowlock is here. Same in the pocket. And there in the middle of the sail, I have a little window that will allow me to fit the two sections together. Here with the sleeve. There I close the flap. And I just have to do up the Velcro. And here my sail is ready to go. I'll go get the mast pieces and put them together. Now it's a carbon windsurfing mast, which is composed of five sections. Now what I'm doing here is I'm putting it intentionally on the sail to keep sand out of the joints. And now I can snap my mast together, piece by piece. I'm passing through here in the row lock, and I insert it into the slot in the sail. The sections are assembled one by one. This is the third piece, the fourth, and the last one. I'll make sure my mast is at the end of the pocket. My mast is in place. Now I'm going to pick up the rig and position it on the boat. Now, a word of caution, be careful not to get sand in the mast foot when you fit it in there. So I'll show you something. I'm going to put the mast foot on the sail bag to keep it out of the sand. After that, there's another little trick too. Position yourself with the wind at your back and put one arm up high. With my arm up high, I have enough leverage and I won't get blown over. All right, and when I lift it up, I'm going to try to keep it into the wind to help me and make it easier and lighter. So here I put my lever arm furthest forward. I lift it up, I rotate, and I push the rig, the mast, into the wind. I can put it here to give myself a rest. And now we're going to position it, still keeping the wind behind you. I lift, and I slip the mast onto the mast foot. I let it fit together. And that's it. Let's see what's left in the bag. So there's the daggerboard and the rudder. That's the daggerboard. I'll put it on the boat. And the rudder's there. It's marine plywood painted black. The advantage of wood is that if you hit the beach, if you hit rocks, or a scrape, there's just a repaint required. No risk of water getting into the rudder blade. So it's really handy. Now I'm going to assemble my tiller. Again with the push pin system. And now we have the pivoting mechanism, which works like this. There's a catch here. It locks down on the position like that. Underway position. And to lift it, there's a tag to pull there. So we're going to put the raised position so it locks in. Now I'm setting it up on the pintle. And there's a pin here to avoid losing it. We'll put it here. Now all that is left is to install the different lines that are on the sail. The wind has shifted a little bit, so I'm going to turn the boat back up wind. And then we'll be able to fix the Cunningham. It goes through there. We come back here. Tension it. And I put a couple hitches just to secure it. Now we have the fang. It comes through here at the foot of the mast. And we come back here with the cam cleat in the block. With the jammer at the back. And that's it. We end with a figure of eight. Here we have the main sheet, and I'm going to uncoil it here and put it at the bottom of the boat. I also have the bridle. 
I keep it like this here when we're on standby. It keeps it from hanging from the back of the boat. The bridle acts as a main sheet traveler. And I tie that here. And I go through the loop. You see, it's a quick attachment, easy to make, just before you get on the water. Same on the other side. And that's it. Now there's just the sheet to pass through the block here. It's a winch block, meaning it's braked. There's a direction of rotation and there's a ratchet. There's an arrow here whose direction of rotation must be respected. This will keep you from pulling too much on your hands when sailing. At the end, I'm going to tie my figure eight knot. And that's it. Our boat is ready to sail. Now I'm going to show you two points about how it works, especially for the dagger board. We can't set it up on the beach. We will do that on, on the water. We will put it here, longer edge on the back, and in front, the bungee cord. The bungee will keep the board in the lowered or raised position, depending on the sailing you're doing, whether upwind or downwind. Here we have the rudder. I showed you the pivot mechanism earlier. We lift here, it clicks into place, and we push to secure it. When we go sailing, we're going to have one control here, which is the sheet, that will allow you to fill the sail and spill wind from it. And the second control, the tiller, will allow you to steer the boat. When you are ready, you can simply lift the boat from the front and drag it the few feet that separate us from the water. So there, quite easy. We're on the sand, it's safe, I can take it to the water. And that's it. You put on your swimsuit and off you go.